I'm going to show you one of the easiest techniques to work with on Patty Popon's Jumbo Puzzle Pieces. I'm working with the 7 inch size and what I'm going to show you today is a process that's designed for middle school, high school, maybe slightly younger could work with this process. But this, this particular technique was designed to do in less than 50 minutes in a class period and to minimize cleanup. So we're not going to be using brushes. Now I've already placed a command media hanging device. It's for frame stabilizing, frame stabilizer clips, stabilizing your frames on a wall, but it works really great on the table and comes right off. And it holds the patty pop-ons to the table while you're working on it so that it doesn't move around. This is a, a loop fabric. It works with Velcro or sticky back hook and loop. And it works quite nicely with the command media. So I'm going to put that down. And then just a couple of other simple materials. I have a paper towel and a clothespin. And what we're going to do is just fold a piece of a paper towel. And essentially we're making a little stamper. Okay, so that's all we're going to do there, like that, and then this becomes what you paint with, and also quite easy to clean up. Now I've got just a plastic lid for paint. You won't need much paint for this particular technique. And water and again you really very minimal on what you need you don't want these exceptionally wet we're going to be using some painters tape and this tape is the delicate variety I found that it will go onto wet surfaces and lock the edges better than the uh, regular painter tape so this is what uh, I prefer. But you can experiment around with other tapes. Now today we're going to use a monochromatic process and a resist. We're going to use a resist technique. And the painter's tape, if you want the areas on your work to remain white, and in this case that's what I'm going for, then you just apply the painter's tape directly to the puzzle piece. Now I like to rip it into thinner strips. You certainly can cut if you prefer. And you're just going to spend some time putting the painter's tape. In this exercise I'm going to follow the design edge of the puzzle piece somewhat and just begin to create a design Painter's tape will unstick to itself. It's actually quite forgiving. I'm going to come around and first make some circular shapes inside the puzzle pieces. When you're working with kids in an art class, you can draw in the fact that you have positive and negative space. It's a wonderful tool to show them 
about positive and negative space. So again, I'm going to essentially follow the shape of the puzzle piece. And this will be the areas that will remain white. You can do some bending of the tape on the surface. Push it down. This one, first layer, will get several layers of paint over it. So you'll want to make sure that you push it down. Say maybe allow a foot of tape, maybe two feet per student. It works quite nicely like this. And as you can see, the design of the puzzle piece is coming out. Going around the edges. Here, I think I'll give it a little diagonal for some interest. tape around. And if you want more of a curve, you can rip the tape into smaller pieces like a dashed line and then build up a curve without too many of the jackets in it, but I find that it looks quite nice with the jagged edges, bending them like that. I'm going to stop that line there. This obviously you're going to be working with the element of art called line and rhythm and motion and repetition. It's a wonderful project for teaching the fundamentals, elements of art and principles of design. Again, you want to continue pushing these down. I'll just add a few more here. Continue this line out. And extend this one over here. Now you will be coming back in with more tape, so you don't need to cover everything. And I do want to make one more
dot there so that I have a center piece inside the, the tab. And I think I'm going to stop there. I've got a fairly nice design. Now what I need is I need this paper towel to be damp but not soaking wet. So I'm going to dip it in the water and then squeeze out extra water so that again it's just damp. And you want to get it into the clothespin so that it becomes a surface that you can rub. Now, I like Prussian blue for this particular one. And I'm going to put a little bit of Prussian blue on the tray. And because the surface here is so smooth and it's not textured like fabric, it doesn't pick up the paint and soak it in as much as other surfaces. So this kind of goes on more like an ink. And so you just need a little tiny bit. Work it a little on the palette so that it's a nice thin layer. And we want to work from light to dark. So the first layer that we put down, we want it to be fairly light. short dabs. You don't want to pick up the tape that you've just put down so you, you can work with it. Pushing it down and then rubbing, going with the tape. Again, this is just a damp paper towel and I push down and then rub. It's actually sealing the tape and then painting around it. So I have a nice blue, light blue surface. I get all the edges. And then on to more painter's tape. This next layer is going to keep anything that's this color now. We've got white under here, and now we've got anything that's this particular color. And I think I'm just going to do a background that's fairly diagonal. So again, all of the lines that I'm putting down now are going to be light blue. I'm going to make a pattern. Just go right over the, all of the other ones. And for this part, you're going to need maybe another foot of painter's tape. Maybe 18 inches, depending on how much the students like to work with. And again, if you have more time, you can cut the tape. But for 50 minutes, I find that ripping the tape actually works quite well. So I'm going to add that. And just a few more over to this side before I apply the next 
Let's see, I want to put this a little closer to the edges. You can just go right off the edges. Now, you're ready for the next layer of paint. I think I'll do one more stripe here. And this is going to introduce a little bit about foreground and background because you're going to add the depth. Again, this is a monochromatic painting process. And now everything is going to get another layer of this same color paint and it's now going to be darker. When it comes off, it will fade into the background. Again, you want to push down and then slide along the tape. And we'll add a little more paint. You just don't want it to be opaque yet. You still want it to be fairly thin to take advantage of the resist process. So you put it on and then wipe it so that it stays fairly thin. I'm going to cover the whole thing again. Just paint right over the top of the painter's tape. Now, this is your final layer of tape, and I'm just going to give it some thick tape. I want to accent the lines that I have in there with some deep blues. So I'm just going to go straight over it and leave this tiny little space here for a dark blue line. Again, you don't have to worry about it. We'll need about another couple of feet for the painter's tape. We want it to be a little thinner and do another blue line along this diagonal. Cover up anything else that you don't want to turn dark blue. Seal that tape down. going to come back and put very dark paint. It's going to be just the darkest layer. darkest layer.
and you're done with the process and you really don't have to wait that long to remove and reveal your design so we're ready to go ahead and just begin removing the painters tape I sometimes use a paper towel to help get the painter's tape away from my fingers. And you can see that your design has come through. And by following the edges of these, you can hook them together at the end of the class period. And they make wonderful group projects to hang and display for a while. And one little piece of blue here. And now, the easiest quickest resist process that I know of. And you have a wonderful design. You've taught the kids about positive and negative space and about foreground and background. Colors receding and it's a monochromatic process. We've used line and repetition and motion establishing some rhythm. Quite successful art project in a very short amount of time. Have fun. They're multifunctional. <laughs> <laughs>